Good afternoon. This afternoon I'm going to be reading from Philippians 3 verses 10 to 16 in the ESV. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature think this way, and if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Okay. Now, a lot of people are teaching the gospel of our salvation as this one time in our lives decision that we make. Uh, now all our sins are forgiven. Uh, heaven has secured us. It can't be taken away from us. End of story. Or out, out on regardless of how we live. This is not the gospel that Jesus taught. It's not the gospel that Paul taught. It's not the gospel that the other apostles taught. They taught a salvation that's continuous. Not something that we have to be walking in, that we have to be living, and we have to continue in until we die or until Jesus returns and takes his bride to be with him. And we only get to be his bride and be with him providing that we meet the requirements. And the requirements is not just a nondescript belief in Jesus Christ. The faith comes from God, and it is persuaded of God, and so it is going to submit to God, and is going to conform to the ways of God and to his word. And his word teaches us that, we, that Jesus died, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness that we might no longer live for ourselves, but we might live for the Lord. He shed his blood for us on that cross in order that we would, um, in order to um, uh, save us out of our, or to rescue us out of our lives of sin so that we would now serve God with our lives, so that we would uh, uh, now do, you know, what he's called us to do and honor him with our, with our lives and with our bodies, you know. Uh, so we must be crucified with Christ in death to sin and raised with him to walk in newness of life in him, no longer as slaves to sin, but now as slaves to God and to his righteousness. For if we continue in sin and we continue in deliberate and habitual sin and we make sin our practice and righteousness and holiness are not our practice, then we will not inherit eternal life with God. So we need to read this in the light of that. And, and I can give you those scriptures if you just ask for them, okay? Um, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. You know, so what he's saying is he's not saying his salvation is complete. He is not saying, because he's saying, not that I have already obtained this or I'm already perfect. We won't be perfect until Jesus Christ returns and he takes us to be with him. And we will only go to be with him if we are walking in obedience to his commands, not necessarily in absolute sinless perfection, but in practice. You know, we need to be walking in obedience to his commands under the new covenant. We need to obey obeying him, uh, walking in fellowship with him living holy and godly lives and not be living in sin, not be deliberately and habitually, uh, especially not premeditatedly sinning against the Lord. Um, so, so what he's speaking of here is what the Bible teaches regarding our salvation, that it is progressive. You know, we are saved past, we are being saved present, active, we will be saved future, when Jesus Christ returns, which is when our salvation will be complete and not until then. And that's the point of what he's saying here. It was one of the points, you know, that, it, that we, have to, we have to walk according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh. You know, um, 
because our salvation is not guaranteed if we don't remain in Christ. You know, there's a lot of scriptures talking about you. Remain in me, and my words remain in you, you know, so that you bear fruit. You know, those who don't bear fruit, meaning that they're not walking in fellowship with the Lord. They're not walking in obedience to him. They're not obeying him in practice, but they're still sinning in practice, you know. He's going to cut those out, you know, and he makes that real clear, you know, and, and why so many people are just glossing over that. I have no clue other than they're just being deceived of the enemy, uh, you know, because how, how can they read the scriptures? How can they read the epistles and the writings and, and this Jesus's sermons and come away with the idea that they can uh, make some profession of faith in Christ once in their lives? And now they're good to go to heaven, you know, and it can't be taken away from them regardless of how they live. That is so contrary to what the scriptures teach. It's so contrary even to just this one section of scripture, you know. So uh, we need to realize that, that salvation is a process and we have to stay in that process. We have to walk according to the spirit, not according to the flesh. We have to obey the Lord. We have to live holy lives all in the power of God, you know, uh, for his, his glory, you know, not for our own. It's not anything we do in our flesh because we can't do this in the flesh because the flesh doesn't drive out flesh, you know, <laughs> only the spirit drives out flesh, you know. So, um, so the point of this is that we need to be, we need to be believers in Jesus Christ who are living the Christian life, who are walking the walk, not just talking it, you know, because it's not, we don't, we're not saved on lip service. You know, we're, Jesus said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, is going to enter the kingdom of heaven, but the ones doing the will of God, the Father who is in heaven. And he said, many are going to come before him on that day of judgment. And they're going to say to him, Lord, Lord, didn't we do this in your name and that in your name? And he's going to turn to them and say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you work of law, workers of lawlessness, because they wouldn't obey the Lord, you know. So those of you who are hearing a gospel that's telling you uh, easy in, easy out. No, it's not the easy way. The easy way is the broad road, you know, the broad gate that leads to destruction and to death, you know, and to hell, you know. The narrow way is hard, you know, because like he said, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. We are to become like Jesus. We are to be becoming like Jesus. And we are to be becoming less like who we were in our flesh, you know. And that's a day-to-day -day process, you know. Every day we have to say no to the flesh, you know. Every day we have to say no to self and yes to God. You know, we have to we not go our own way, you know. Uh, because that flesh is... is, is it is still there. It shouldn't be in control anymore. You know, we should have died to that, but it's a daily dying. You know, Jesus said, if anybody's going to come after me, he must deny self, take up his cross daily, daily die to sin and to self and follow him. That means to obey him, to do what he says. You know, he says, for if, and this is a, a paraphrase, or if we hold on to our old lives of living and sin and for self, we're going to lose them for eternity. But if for his sake, you know, we give up our old lives, we die to sin and to self, and now we follow Jesus in obedience, then we have eternal life with God. We need to know what the scriptures teach and not believe these people are just saying, you know, you can just pray some prayer or some give some acknowledgement, you know, of, of Jesus and what he did, and now you're good to go. No, you're not. You know, too many people are professing faith in Jesus Christ who are living no different from the world. And I was just thinking about that just recently, you know, like on social media, and I, I look at the posts, you know, that Christians are putting out there, and I look at the posts that the non-Christians are putting out there. And for the most part, there's not much difference. You know, they're, they're talking about, the same music, the same games, the same movies, uh, this, it's the same conversations, the same politics, you know, they, even if they're on two opposite ends, you know, I see people, Christians supposedly, being way more passionate about politics 
you know, and defending, you know, their their candidate, you know, or their 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 political party or whatever, and and they'll fight tooth and nail to defend that. But you don't hear them defending the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, you don't hear them talking about Jesus. They claim to be Christians. You know, I see a lot of Christians on religious holidays, like on Easter and Thanksgiving and Christmas that uh you know then they post all kinds of things about jesus you know but uh you know from my from my uh, what do you call it uh observations yes i don't see too many christians being much different you know than the world you know so i, I think about okay you want this person who's not a christian who doesn't profess faith in jesus christ to become a christian but if you're just like that person, and there's no difference than you other than you profess faith in Jesus Christ, what's going to lead that person to want to become a Christian? You know, where, where's the change, you know, other than just a profession of faith? You know, um, and we have to really think about that, you know. But anyway, um, yes, we are not perfect yet. But lack of perfection is never to be used as an excuse for deliberate and habitual sin against God. Because uh, we have to walk in in holiness and in righteousness and obedience to our Lord and not in sin if we are going to expect to be saved from our sins and have eternal life with God. And so the scriptures teach, again, I will give you those scriptures. You just ask for them. Because uh, Paul taught it. John taught it. Jesus taught it. The other apostles taught it. They did not teach at all this modern gospel that's being spread across America anyway. I don't know about other countries um but you know wherever you live you know what's the predominant uh, gospel message um so what he's saying is yes i'm not perfect yet but i am pressing on i am going forward i am uh i am walking in fellowship with the lord i am obeying the lord in practice I, I am putting my former life behind me. I'm putting behind me the, the things of the flesh, you know, and, and now I am going forward in, in, in the grace of God, you know, in the power of God, um, to, to follow the call of God, you know, to, to do what he says, to obey him, to be the, the, the servant of the Lord that he has called me to be. And I'm talking in general for all people. This is This should be... This should be our prayer. This should be where our hearts are. Because uh, it says, let those of us who are mature think this way. And if you're not mature, then you need to get to be mature. Um, and if it says that if you, any of you think otherwise, God will reveal it to you. Now, God may reveal it to you, but you have to accept it. You know, because it's all through the scriptures, you know. And if you aren't seeing it, then you aren't really paying attention to what the scriptures or teach because you, you really you can't miss it. it it just jumps out um so then it says only let us hold true to what we have attained you know we, but we need to not only hold true to what we have attained so far but we need to continue in those walks of faith continue in obedience to the lord continue in serving him and don't fall you know back in sin because if sin is our practice and if righteousness and godliness and obedience to our Lord are not our practice, we will not inherit eternal life with God, sadly.